Jesus Christ. May his never-ending mercy be with all of us today. Welcome and thank you for joining us. This program is brought to you by the Mahabharat Kundusan Broadcast American Center English Service here in the Washington DC studio. My name is Iona Batu and I'll be your host for today. <laughs> The angels of the Lord encamp all around those who fear Him and deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 34, chapter 7 through 8. May you hear the hymns of the angels, uh, our dear brother, Dekona Stefanos Hailu. Uh, Dekona Stefanos Hailu was not born here. He was born in uh, Ethiopia, but came here when he's five. And um, he took his deaconship while he was here. Um, he is attending George Mason University right now. He serves in the Hamerono Kedeskidama Church here in Virginia. <laughs> Join us as we explore a variety of topics and hopefully find answers to questions all of you might have regarding life, church, and spirituality. This program will be broadcasted every Tuesday, so please join us with positive feedback and how we can better serve you. Today we will be interviewing two guests uh, named Brahane and Yonata. They are from two different states. We will talk about their spiritual growth in the Ethiopian Orthodox Sawahiro Church. Stay tuned. Thank you again for accepting our invitation and for taking the time to be with us today. Please introduce yourselves and what state you are in and what church do you serve? Hello, my name is Yonata Kidane. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I serve with the OTYD group. Welcome, Yonata. Hello, my name is Brahani Selassie and I attend Abune Geber Memphis Kudus in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for accepting our invitation and being here with us today. Um, the first question I would like to ask is, um, what do you think of the English service within the Ethiopian Orthodox Sawahiro Church? For me, what I think about the English service is, I think it's a very great opportunity for the youth, just people in general, to learn more about God and just to explore um, and meet new people who are also like-minded and share the same values. Anything you want to add to that, Barani? Yes. Um, well, you know, yes, I would like to add something. Um, I feel like the English um, ser sermons and the English teachings are really good for um, the ones that are born here in um, America, um, especially at um, Abuna Gerber Memphis Kudus, um, we have a really good um, youth program like um, um, like Deacon Yosef. Um, he's really good at working with um, the youth and um, also Deacon Dowit. 
Um, he has came to uh, Buena Gabriel Memphis Caduce uh, plenty of times and um, yeah, really good with um, okay. communicating and translating things in English, um, English sermons, English teaching. So, um, so far it's been really good. Okay. So before I move on to the next question, I wanted to ask, um, many viewers will be asking this, um, were you born here in Brahani? Uh, and did you get baptized and when and where? Yeah, so um, basically, uh, I was born here in America. Um, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and well, basically, yeah. So basically, I was born here in America. Um, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I attend a, a Buena Government Memphis Caduce, where I was baptized by um, priest Igetekal and um, priest um, Yakub, and uh, my baptism name. Um, is um, Berhani Selassie, but originally my legal name uh, was Tevon Booker. But um, after I got baptized, um, I actually changed my name um, to legally change my name to Berhani Selassie. Um, I was baptized on Hosanna Sunday. Um, it was April the 21st, 2019. Okay, wow. That's uh, very amazing, Berhani. Um, so what I w else I wanted to ask is... Um, so how, how is the English service, especially for you, Brani, when you came um, into the uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Tawaro Church, was it in English that, um, that brought you in closer, or was it Amharic, or what, what language was spoken to you when you first came? Uh, well, yeah, so, um, well, you know, growing up, I was in Atlanta, it's a big Abisha community, and um, so I always went to school with um, Ethiopians, Eritreans. I was familiar with the culture. Um, you know, I was familiar with um, just basically the Ethiopian culture and all, you know, growing up um, around people um, who listened to reggae a lot, um, a lot of people who was part of the um, Rastafarian community, um, a lot of things like that. Um, so me personally, I was already familiar with um, you know, Ge'ez, I was familiar with Amharic, and um, I already knew English, so the reason why I was able to connect better with um, the, the services in Ge'ez and Amharic is because, um, you know, I was already used to hearing everything in English, or, you know, just basically, uh, I was ready for a deeper, I was ready to experience a deeper uh, you know, feeling um, mm -hmm. of worship, you know, you know what I mean? Yes. So, um, you know, as a, as a young kid, I was always the different, the different one out of the group, you know, always a vegetarian for like most of my life. You know, I was always wow. the one that was reading. Yeah. I was always the one that was just basically secluding myself and praying and, and just reading on knowledge, reading um, the Bible, just reading, just really reading, you know, that's one mm -hmm. of my, my strengths is reading. And, um, you know, like I said, I was looking for a, a more experienced way of worship, more, um, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Yes, perfect. That makes sense. Uh, Yonata, uh, did you grow up in the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahiro Church um, as a young kid? Or, like, you know how sometimes our parents force us to go to church without us? We don't, we don't know what we're listening to we don't know why we're there were you that type of child and then as you grew um the english service um, brought you closer to god or were you always uh, listening and wh while you were younger so whenever i was younger i was always one of those uh kids who didn't enjoy going to church like yeah. i was forced to go to church you know and like just my time there wasn't was it fun, you know? But, you know, over the years, as I grew up, I started to, you know, get closer, more with God, to learn more about Him. And slowly, you know, I found my, I found my place here with OTYD. They're the ones mm -hmm. who kind of showed me, you know, the true, you know, not just, I wouldn't say boring, but the fun side, you know? When you have friends at OTYD, when you have, you know, your brothers and sisters, who you, who you can call on, it's, mm -hmm. it makes it fun, you know? So the, the English service brought you more into God? When yes, you understood it? Did. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
so my other question is, are we doing enough for the English service or do we need to do more? I feel like there's always room for improvement, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as the English service grows, I feel like getting more organized and structured is, you know, necessary because without, you know, organization, it's going to be, you know, chaos, you know? Mm -hmm. But so far, the, the English service right now, it's, it's, I feel like it's reaching so many different uh, people and I feel mm -hmm. like it's at a great point right now. So. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything, Brownie? Uh, yes, I, I do, I do, I do really feel like, um, um, we are doing um, really good with with the English because um, I remember me taking, um, you know, the step to just go to Kadassi, um, mm -hmm. even though, you know, I was familiar with Gaez and English. I mean, Gaez and Amhart, the the English the, to see the translation of the Gaez, the Amhart and the English, it, it really gave you a more in-depth um, experience of, um, you know, um, how to really appreciate the church, you know what I mean? Um, also, the, you know, like the Bible, like the Amharic Bible, um, mm -hmm. it's a really good translation that's available now for English speakers, um, which is the Orthodox Study Bible. Mm -hmm. um, my church actually, you know, um, provided me with that, that book, which had a lot of, um, what is it, um, you know, footnotes or like um, details to explain every scripture. Um, to give you a better understanding of what you're reading. So yeah, the English, it, it, we have been doing a really good job at translating things in English. Um, I also had the um, the Kadassi, which is translated, um, you know, uh, yeah, the Kadassi book, which is translated in um, Ge'ez, some Hark, and English in the same book. So that's really been a, book, a big help. Um, I used to use that when I um, first started attending um, Kadassi, and I used to follow along. Um, with the book mm -hmm. in my hand, but now um, I've reached the point to where, you know, I can just say Kadassi um, without even reading English or and still understand, you know, um, what's amazing. being said. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, uh, so I, I feel like we are growing uh, in the English community. Like we have sermons, we have hymns, and like Yonata said, I, I feel like the structure part is where we're lacking a little bit. And if we focus on that, then we might actually, you know, spread the gospel. Um, um, so in regards to um, how we do more in English, there are some people who are saying that because of speaking English that we might lose our culture, we might lose our faith. Um, so what is your opinion on that? Uh, I feel like I brought you guys, I brought you two here to show everybody that the English, <coughs> the service can be really good and it can be bringing you closer to God. Like Ahun Brahane, the English translation of the Kedase and the hymns and the Bible. Now, since you learned it in English, now you know what English is. Because yeah. why? First, the English brought you closer to God and then you wanted to learn more. So, like, what do you guys want to tell our viewers that about the English service and how it impacted your life? Go ahead, Yanata. Um, like, okay, so that that example was great. You know, like, if you want to teach uh, people in Spain about the gospel, you don't uh -huh. teach them in Amharic or Giz. You teach them in Spanish, you know, or Latin. Uh -huh. So. I feel like we're not losing our culture. We're we are gaining more of the youth, more of more people by you know adapting to that culture, you know, to, mm -hmm. to the American culture, learning their language, and you know, everything is the same. We, we we have the same prayers, we have the same holidays, we we wear the same you know netalas. Everything mm -hmm. is the same, but the only difference is the language, and that's it. Nothing else is changing. God is still God, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I also agree with them. Um, I think I think that uh, it's important to um, to keep to keep your culture. You know, um, I don't see it as um, a negative. If anything, it's, it's more of a positive. You know what I mean? Um, I really agree with what he said. Um, you know, God's God's languages in all languages. Um, 
So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel like when a parent or um, the older generation see that the kids are coming because of the English service, like you would think that they'd be very proud of us. Like we're going to church. Like we're, you know, and like my whole point of of this interview was to show parents and the older generation that the English service is much needed for the youth today because we are losing our youth, um, especially when they go to college. Um, so I, one final question is, um, for the people around you, uh, what have you done um, to spread the gospel? But honey, you can go if you like. Okay, so for um, the people around me, um, what have I done to spread the gospel? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I've, I've tried my best, you know, through guidance of God um, to do a lot of things in my community where um, a lot of people may not be familiar with, um, you know, the, the culture or, 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 you know, God, you know, they may not be familiar with either one. So mm -hmm. um, or you may have people who are familiar with um, the culture, but they're not familiar with um, God, you know what I mean? Or the religion. And so what I would do basically is um, a, a numerous people I've brought um, to the Orthodox Church um, so they could see how Kadassi is, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, get a feeling of um, how, how the, the, um, the, the service is, um, mm -hmm. a feeling of, um, you know, the different languages, um, you know, what we do, um, you know, how we experience our um, culture, I mean, our, our faith, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Let me think. Um, like, w what do you say to bring them to the church, if that makes sense? Uh, like, or well, do they okay, ask? So, Go ahead. Um, well, well, basically, growing up in America, um, if you don't know about the the Orthodox to a head of church, the first thing most wet in the Western world, um, the first thing that people you really know about is um you know um like baptist or um jehovah witness or things like that um for me for me personally because you know i read a lot and i talk to people who um um they have more of a, a pan-african uh background um mm -hmm. which you know um uh, well I, I would tell them things like uh well, well which is the truth you know um, in the, the, the Ethiopian Bible, I miss 81 books, you know, and um, mm -hmm. in the Protestant Bible, um, you know, the, the ba um, Baptist, Methodist um, Bible is, is just 66 books, you know what I mean? So I would tell them that um, it's, 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 it's a lot of things that um, can be learned from our church. Um, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of things that will bring you closer to um, experiencing who Christ really is, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, going, going more into detail, um, with people that I usually talk to, um, you you can you can, you um, basically tell them more about to a head though. You know what I mean? Like the the um, the oneness nature of Christ. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's 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 just um, in the Western world, it's it's really um, it's really tricky. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? it is. It, I feel like once they um, come inside their church, like you know how. He, uh, in the Ethiopian Orthodox Sawada Church, you have five senses. So you can use all, all those five senses are being used. You're seeing the images, um, you're smelling the incense, um, you're hearing hymns, you know, things like that. So I feel like once you get them to the church, I feel like the Holy Spirit will work on them. So, yeah. Yes. And um, if, if I could add, um, yeah. another thing that um, people love to see um, uh, is the icons, you know. Yeah. Um, you, in the Western world, really, you don't see um, the melanated icons, or you yeah. you don't see um, the beautiful uh, Ethiopian um, depictions of um, you know the faith. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, here, growing up in America, you when you see that, it, it automatically attracts you. Like you know, if, from someone that has a background of, of um, Christ and and things like that, they see it and it resonates with them spiritually, and that's yeah. what brings them closer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what is I that, also do. Uh, is that the first thing you saw when you came to the church? Is that what like captured you, the images? Uh, <laughs> the first thing that caught me when I came to the church was the was the tablet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That was the first thing. 
that caught me. Uh, yeah. So if I might add, um, what's really important, this might be kind of off subject, but if mm-hmm. I, if I might add, what's really important, um, that I talk to people about is, um, understanding the, um, Kadis Selassie, the Holy Trinity. Mm-hmm. Um, that's very important. Um, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit, one God, mm-hmm. um, that's very important. And in, in, in the Western community, people really don't, um, not everybody, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's very, it's a big, um, misinterpretation of, yeah. um, you know, what that is, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, another thing that's very important, uh, what well, you have the, the, the five mysteries, you know, the mystery of the Trinity, the mystery mm-hmm. of the incarnation, um, the mystery of baptism, um, the mystery of communion and the, the mystery of resurrection. Um, mm-hmm. That's another thing that I tell people about um, that they, they, you know, um, they haven't really heard before or they didn't really grasp that concept. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, another thing that I tell people about, which is very important, is well, to me and to all of us Orthodox to Edo Christians is Kadis Dingo Marium, St. Mary, um, very important, you know, in the Western world, um, you know, I guess because either it wasn't introduced or, you know, it's just not enough, you know, I don't know what it is. But what I can say is what I tell people is um, from my understanding, me growing into the Orthodox Church, um, understanding, um, going to Kadassi, reading. Um, Kadis Dengel Mariam is very important. She's very important in understanding um, who Christ is. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. After all, that is, she, she is the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? And yes. you, can never, you can never love her. You can never not love her too much. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just. When I talk about this thing in Marium, it just, it, I get, I, I become very passionate about it mm-hmm. because I, I understand, like, yeah, I understand how much, you know, um, the love that she has for us, you know, and mm-hmm. the love that Christ has for her, you know what I mean? And it's, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just ama- It's just one of the most amazing things that um, I have experienced becoming Orthodox Christian, to be honest. Thank you so much for that, Yonata. That was, that was beautiful. Thank you for saying that. To, to answer your question, how have I been spreading the, the gospel? I feel like the most effective is using it. When you, when you post on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Facebook, you, you're using the technology that God gave us, you know, just mm-hmm. to you know, spread the gospel to so many different kinds of people. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, the, the finding of the cross, you know, where they burn, where they do, they do the bonfire. I mm-hmm. posted it on my Instagram. And then like, so the, people were sliding up, hey bro, what's this, what's this? Mm-hmm. And so I was telling them, I was explaining them about the finding of the cross. And actually I was gonna invite now someone next year to come. So mm-hmm. spreading the gospel using social media is one of the most effective ways. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Brahani if he could, um, as he was just talking about Mertachin uh, the Virgin Mary, if he could say Salam Aleikum for us. Um, he he posted it on his Instagram, and it is it just it's just so beautiful. And if you could say it for us. Oh yes, no problem. Best of my mom, or Memphis could do so. I do Amen. Salam leki in ze ne segi ne bliki, Mariam in mine, na stebi kwaki, na adwi mili, tamata haseni in biki, bente hana i miki, where hakim ma buki, ma brene yom dingil biki. Thank you so much. Um, I have no words to describe what I'm uh, feeling right now, and I hope the viewers are also feeling the same way. Thank you guys so much for taking your time and uh, being with us with us today. Um, uh, we hope we will see you again in a different program. <laughs>
has helped them grow spiritually and closer to God. Please join us next week as we talk to many different English youth organizations about their struggles and accomplishments they have achieved. If the Lord wills and we live, we will see you next week. Thank you.